Old Gods of Appalachia is a horror campaign that may contain material not suitable for all audiences. Listener discretion is advised. Hello neighbors, we return again to the cozy confines of our small town of Guilty Hole, West Virginia. You won't find it on a map, of course, but like many small places, it matters to those in the town and those that are nearby. Many a Saturday gives way to the town romp, a gathering where friends and family can cut a rug, eat their fill, and meet their future partners, perhaps. We'll be there soon enough, but I should first speak of, of the events of last evening. A small cargo plane crash-landed in the woods right near our little town, carrying a, a cart, a uh, cart, carrying a crate and some now deceased passengers. And it left behind a, a severed hand and a bill of lading. Of course, the carcass of, carcass of the first aeroplane ever seen up close in Guilty Hole was also left. If you were paying attention, there was also a seance, some illegal drinking, a father aging fast, and some other happenstances. But let's meet the people who matter most to our story. Welcome everyone. It looks like we have proper audio. I think that is important. We finally got it right after our second week. <coughs> <laughs> Why don't we go around, let everybody say who they are, where they can be found, and I will drop uh, in the chat, the information people might want to know about you and where they can find you and follow. Why don't we start over to the left where we did last week, and I have two people out of place. No, I don't. They're right. <laughs> my, uh, my old school dyslexia kicked in, and I mismatched faces for a moment. Why don't we start with Evangeline? Uh, hi, yes. So I am Juicy, Juicy Garland, a Boston area track fan and super nerd. You can find me on the twitters.com at Juicy Garland and Instagram at Juicy.Garland. And I am playing Evangeline, our uh, big old uh, nerd and researcher from Boston. Evangeline, and uh, uh, I'm very excited to play her tonight. All right, Ra Ra. Hey, I'm Ra Ra. I like to play games. Um, you can find me on Blue Sky. I don't really like going many other places. Um, I'm playing Jericho Elagas, a superstitious herbalist who serves the green, uh, if you will. All right, let's move on to to Annie Lynn. Then. Hello, my name is Annie Lynn McSweeney. I am the game warden here in Guilty Hole, the only game warden in the entire county. I am the protector of this group, uh, and in real life, you can find me at, at Lady Eighty Paints. I commission paint miniatures. I stream and I act. All right, and Volney. Hello, my name is Volney Rogers. I am the oddest man in town, probably. Ask me, ask me about God. Go ahead. <laughs> All others will dare you to. I'm uh, a very complicated answer. <laughs> Uh, you can find me at Jellyfish Lines most places on the internet, including uh, my card at jellyfishlines.card.co, and you can find me everywhere from there. So when we last left, all of you were walking back into town and greeting uh, those with their eyes peeled to find out what was going on. Yes? I think we forgot Billy. We forgot someone. Forgot Billy. <laughs> <laughs> the shadows oh. are just deep around him. He's very well hidden sometimes. <laughs> I apologize. You mean who did I who did I miss? Rue? No. No, William. William Matheson. William. <laughs> oh, I did. You're right. I went over you. My apologies. Inside check. Did I did I? <laughs> but I did drop your I think we links. also we also at least so last week 
we went clockwise, and so I was fourth instead of only. All right, it, it you happens. are up then. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Selena. You can find me at abcdfar on Twitter and. Uh, Oh, geez. What is it on Instagram? I don't know. I don't remember. I don't really care. Uh, I'll be playing William Matheson. Our, um... <clears throat> our first explorer who cannot escape the darkness. And we'll see how that darkness unfolds. Another well weird little guy. He's just a sweet, wholesome boy. I don't know what you're talking about. Very <laughs> sweet. Very wholesome. Carries an axe. Yeah. But doesn't have an axe to you grind. No, not at all. So when you were re- you were returning to town last week and everyone was walking home after the events of the evening, and we're going to start with one with one person in particular this in this night. It's early morning, <clears throat> and Volney finds finds himself heading to the church where he has been spending his time during sleepy time because they give him a free bed and a place to rest and all the things that churches are wont to do for those that are wandering in life. It is very dark though. The blue moon is starting to recede now that it's so early in the morn. We'll say it's four or five in the morning. So sun should be coming up any any moment within an hour. And as you're heading home, you kind of get that feeling you get when you're being watched, which of course in Appalachia is just never a good feeling to have. I'm walking as calmly as I can. I'm, I'm acknowledging that feeling. Excellent. So as you're walking, you can, you hear the sounds of nature, of course. There are birds starting to to scrabble around in the in the treetops and every now and then a crow caws out in the distance and another another one answers. <clears throat> and then you hear a couple more crows. And it ain't long before you see several of the trees lying in the street on your way to the church are pretty full of those big black birds. Not that there's anything wrong with crows there, unless you have a field, of course, then there's something way wrong about having crows around it. Well, that's it. Well, you've seen crows, you've seen them gather. I mean, everyone's seen a murder of crows, right? I mean, yes, but I don't think I've seen one with this many. It kind of feels like they're watching. But crows often watch. You can't really put it on the crow. I'm heading to the church. Okay. And as as you're walking, you hear the sounds of, of birds kind of flutter off. And, it, and some of them you hear the sounds of birds flutter back, but up ahead of you. And you see, you know, the trees up ahead kind of fill with crows also. And some of the ones behind are no longer filled with crows. How far is the church? Maybe a quarter of a mile, not that far from here now. You've been walking for a bit, across the bridge and everything. How close am I to town? Mm, you're probably a half a mile from town. You're closer to the church than you are to town, that's for sure. I'm not running. Awesome. Because you can't outrun a crow, you know. I don't like this. I really don't like this. Um, and I am just going to continue as calmly as possible while keeping my eyes locked on those pros. And as you're walking, you you get this feeling, you have a sensation, I'd say, not a feeling, that you have experienced one other time in your life. A very odd sensation 
when you're in your darkness and it seems like a hand slips into your hand, at least it feels like it, but you do not see a hand when you look down. You just see your hand kind of close around. And your walking continues if you want. Perhaps accompanied, perhaps not. Who knows what's going on with this? Hello there, friend. I'm heading home. There are no words, but wherever you're head, you feel that hand in hand accompaniment that you once felt and appreciated and perhaps appreciate again. I don't know. Do you appreciate it? I'm not sure. I do. It's just odd to see it when day is dawning. And as you walk and you you hear a sound, one you don't hear very often. It takes you a while to kind of realize it's maybe the sound of a of a horn on a on an automobile can you make me an intelligence roll please at a four which means a 12 you need to roll over on a d20 oh god am i allowed to turn around <laughs> You're allowed to do whatever you want. All you're doing is walking down the street, right? Yeah, sure. Hope I am. I got to beat a 12, right? Correct. On intellect, right? Yes, on intellect. Am I allowed to use a pool? Are you, you are, if you wish. Do you know Please. what you're using it for? Uh, to beat the check. To be what? Beat that check. Oh. I got a nine. Yeah, so I that, that would mean a, <clears throat> I think he means an yeah. edge. Yeah, edge. Okay. Yeah, you I, could. I'm not smart. You're really supposed to do it before the roll because you do all your math before. But it's okay. It's all right to actually miss a thing or two. You know that, right? Yes. So <clears throat> suddenly you are, you have this splash of water in your face unexpectedly it must have been the automobile running by and you suddenly realize you are full of water all around you and your eyes open and you realize you are in you are in the in the creek that the bridge runs over you have found yourself in the water of the creek and not even that far from town much less distant than you had imagined Oh, what the hell? What the hell? And even worse still, you are right in the middle of the creek, which means the only way you got here is if you fell off the bridge. I'm looking up at the top of the bridge. And you see the top of the bridge? There are some crows sitting up there. You know, they sit on the on the row, the edge of the of the of the bridge, as crows like to do, so they can see out, check in, look into town, maybe look for a, a morsel here and there. You don't feel a hand in your hand no more, though. Gah! The crow, a crow, looks down at you, and flies off, and the other ones start flying off too, leaving you to your own devices, and you are sort of slipping down the creek and it is mighty cold in January in this creek I'm getting out of there do you have swim are you a swimmer no not a swimmer all right I'm gonna come back to you in a moment if you don't mind okay. William you are you know about to head home Something eats at you for a moment, and you hear this splash of water, and then a, a truck come into town. 
Looks like the postal truck is coming into town. It oogaed, but there was no one there, so that's unusual. But right after the ooga, you heard a big splash, and the postal truck goes right past you. Uh, well, sh shit, uh, I hear a splash, so it has to be something big, so I'm at least gonna go check out what's going on over there. Alright, so you, you get over the bridge, and you look I'll around start and... start kind of looking over, I'm assuming I see Volney in the, in the creek. And then, maybe 50 yards down, you see Volney rolling away in the creek, and it's moving, he's moving pretty quick. Volney, now what the hell are you doing in the creek this late at night? And he don't oh, no. look like he's swimming too well. Hell, ugh. The creek ain't that deep. It's deep enough to drown in, but no. it is fairly quick. Uh, I'm gonna... Because I'm also not a swimmer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get to at least the bank and then run, basically, to to where, like, a little bit further down the river than where Volney is to then hopefully wade in and then catch them. So you're going to try and outrun them and get out ahead. Mm-hmm. Are you fast? I, I do have, uh, I'm trained in running. Ah, that is, that is what you'll need. So I'm going to give you a roll at a two, which is not that difficult. You're a pretty, you have, you are trained... You can handle the, the distance. It is kind of rough on the edges of the banks, but you got to outrun someone floating down down the creek. That's that's a bit tougher than just someone in a pond. Fair, fair. It's also winter, so not a lot of water running through either. Yeah, luckily okay. it ain't frozen over at this time of year. Many years it has been. So I just got to beat a six? You got to beat a six, okay. which means you could fail with... I got a lovely nine. Lovely nine. You get out ahead, and there are, because it's winter, lots of broken branches and sticks and stuff all over the banks, but Volney's coming quick and don't look like he's yeah. uh, able to get to the bank very easily. Help me. Yeah, I'm, like, basically uh, dragging a branch and, like, even wading into the creek to basically get a, some sort of bridge either across or at least towards the middle to where Volney's at so that way we can both start pulling ourselves back in. All right, so you, you get into Places that. Places, it's cold. It is cold. <clears throat> Volney, you see up ahead of you, thank goodness, someone out there. What are you going to do about your predicament? I I'm looking to what they're doing right now, and I am going to try and grab that branch. All right. Can you make me a, um, I think this would be a, whichever you have better, speed or might. You might be able to muscle your way with a bit of swim, or you might be able to just maneuver your way towards the stick a little better. I have 12. Against, against a, a, a two, which is a six. You need to, you need to. Roll above a six. Seven. You catch the very last bit of stem left on that stick. You even feel it creak a bit under your weight, and then suddenly, yeah, the mighty, the mighty power of the axe wielder drags you to the Sir. bank. Now what the hell happened? I saw the mail truck pass by. I don't know. How? You had to have fallen into the creek, but what? I felt something take hold of my hand. I don't know what it was. I'm sorry? Something took hold of my hand. I don't know what it was. And I was, I, I'm pulling them <laughs> back in, out of the water. I was just going home. Okay. Well, I'm, I now feel obligated to escort you back home before so that way nothing else crazy happens it's getting too dark to be out this late i look like a pathetic wet cat well we can at least <laughs> we can dry off 
I'm, I suppose, somewhere. I mean, you got a fire or something, right? Uh oh, there's a church. Okay, somewhere warm to sleep. That's at least something I can clean up at the. That church ain't warm. There ain't no fire in that church. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, you know Everyone what? just bundles up to go to church. How far is where I'm staying right now? It's not far from... It's in town. There's a, a little um, uh, home that you, the, you stay yeah. in. It was the... Jenny Lind home, I think is what it's called. No, I was staying at the hotel. Oh, I you're right. You're at the hotel. Oh, they have a fireplace. Yeah. That's for sure. Exactly. That's. Yeah. I think that's where we head in that instance then. Okay. You can you can crash where I'm staying for right now, I suppose. It'll be fine. Um, and just start just shivering and, like, trying to get as much water off as possible. And as you're heading over, you see that the, the postal truck, which comes once a week, is bringing a box into the post office. You know, pretty normal. Sees you. Everything okay? Yeah. Uh, did you see Volney on the on the bridge as you're passing through? Uh, no. Well, what'd you honk at? There were a bunch of honk. crows that were flying all over in front of my my car, my truck. Huh. Trying to get them to move. Hmm. Blazing blue moon. Ugh. Have a good morning. We just morning had you. a little dip in the creek. Oh. Yeah, you may want to get him in, yeah. in the warmth there, because that is pretty cold water, I imagine. Yes. As <laughs> as I look down at, like, my drenched lower half, it's great. <sighs> and he tips his hat to you. And heads into the post office. Mm, I don't like this. You get in. You don't have a fireplace in your room, though. You have a, There's a common fireplace for mm -hmm. the common area. Probably best to warm up there, I, uh, you know, before heading yeah. out. Yeah. I think <laughs> I, I pop Volney in front and then head upstairs to my room to then change out of my wet pants into something like more comfortable clothing and then bring my pants out to dry and warm by the fire that are currently wet okay <clears throat> over at the uh the mcsweeney home you go in and you find your your father is fast asleep on the couch there is a a one of those injection devices on the table for some of the medicine that he's been prescribed by by Dr. Clearwater. Um, looks like he, for the first time, succeeded in, in taking this medicine, and he looks like he's sleeping pretty peaceful, except for the occasional loud <laughs> which you've gotten used to over the years. You, you don't even pay it no mind. Mm-hmm. Well, at least some of that medicine's working right. Whew. Knocked him out once a lot. Oh, I, I, you, you're getting home so late. And he looks over and his eyes are kind of just slits, like barely open. Oh, my apologies. I, I didn't mean to fall asleep here on the couch. I should have been in, in oh. my bed. No, don't worry about it, Daddy. I Trust me. Wherever you can sleep, if you sleep soundly, trust me, I'd rather you be sleeping as sound as a dog on a log, trust me. I, I am so tired. I have not been sleeping like this in a long time. I gotta say, there's something to that, to that medicine. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. I, I, I hope it continues to work for you, because I don't know, I'm all out of ideas, honestly. <laughs> I'm in a go back to sleep if you don't mind and he just turns over the other way face first I, into the couch thank god i put uh, one of the knitted blankets over him okay he cozies into it pretty nicely
wonder what that them weird people were. And then I go off to go to bed. You go to bed. Okay. <clears throat> Evangeline, what are you doing when you get to town? In the evening? It's super early in the morning, 4 or 5 a.m., you know, after all the work, ah. putting out the fire and stuff. Uh, yes. You so are... I suppose I should uh, get my way over to bed, right? Yeah, I you're mean... pretty sooty from the, from the smoke. Yes, yeah. I'm filthy, and it's rather late, so I suppose I should go to bed. And that means uh, making my way over to my rented place, which is with that lovely Cherokee man, who uh, my uncle uh, knew. Chewy. Yes, exactly, Chewy. Uh, he, he's a lovely fellow, and uh, he did respond to my letters when I sent them out, so uh, he did lend me a room, and I'll go to him. You get in, you and... Chewy is actually up. He is not someone to sleep lightly in the morning. Uh, oh, God. Uh, Ch Chewy, uh, I apologize for arriving so late and or early, depending on your perspective today. Uh, there was uh, some sort of aeroplane crash. And uh, as a result, um, I am turning in rather late. Uh, I'm going to go to bed if you do not. Oh, <laughs> Um, the but, uh, but no, I do, uh, am going to turn in rather late if you do not mind. You, you ain't my child. I don't keep tabs on you. If you want to come in at 4 or 5 a.m., I'm perfectly okay with that. Uh, uh, thank you. Do you do smell uh, a little bit like the fire from, from what you call it, that aeroplane that you said. Uh, yes, it was a rather terrible. Um, uh, to be quite honest, the... The, the human cost was terrible in the woods. You want me to uh, you want me to wash up those clothes for you, get that smoke off while you while you sleep. I can get those cleaned up for you and they'll be ready oh, later in the day. Honestly, if you do not mind, yes, I'll leave them outside my door. I have a change uh, in my rooms. Uh, but yes, I'll leave these outside the door if you do not mind cleaning them or sending them to be clean. I would most appreciate it. Yes, thank you. That is most kind. You're, you're a sweet person. Thank you. Get some Z's. Good night. Uh, yes, indeed. Most appreciated. And you head in. Ra Ra, what are you doing when you get back to town and everyone's you know, heads out in their own directions. It's early in the morning. Not the kind of midnight strolls you normally normally would like. Uh, I think I would head home. Um, first things first, I plan on putting that hand and, and to a box of dirt, draw a circle around it, just in case it gets a little frisky. Uh, and maybe tuck it into a dark shadow underneath my bed. Um, and then I would like to take the eight legs of Bernard, my recently deceased uh, spider friend, and I would like to put one in eight little corsages that I'm going to give out the next day to little kids to like keep them a little extra safe, maybe give them a little extra luck. Um, but after that, I would definitely get to sleep, at least get a little shut eye. There's a dance tomorrow. There's a dance today. Ah, uh, heck darn it. <laughs> <clears throat> so you're going to get a little I, bit of sleep. Thoughts drift into the morphine I saw earlier. No, no. <laughs> um, and tuck myself in. <sighs> Exhausted. The night finally takes your eyes and lets you find some, some void of peace. And you sleep for many hours. Mm -hmm. It is very likely, though, that between you and and Annie McSweeney, one of you is the first up, because you are almost always the first ones up. Yeah, on I, I sleep about an hour, maybe that. Okay. Oh, Annie can get up first with an hour. <laughs> <laughs> you get up, your paw is still sleeping comfy on the Ooh. bed. 
Lord knows I might see, need some of that one of these days. God, have me out for a week straight. Whew. And I start to like fix myself some um some coffee on the stove. Mm. Yeah, coffee is good. That you'll definitely like need that old, today. Like, grinding it <coughs> old style. Pouring it in the uh Yeah. You know cafeteria thing. Press. <laughs> the press, yes. Yeah. You finish up getting your coffee and do you do you cook breakfast or do you go out without? Are you a breakfast I, person or? I I take a, a crust of bread. All right. Honestly, that's all I need. So you head out early. You can see the decorations in the morning light now that there's some sunlight up. They look bright and cheerful, like even though there was a lot of death from the from last evening there is something very charming about the setup of the romp and the town outside of um the postal truck heading out is empty for the most part it is a a weekend morning on the romp day so nobody gets up early they they see it as almost a holiday <clears throat> and you uh catch a scent of something Off, off to the it's the scent of something dead you've smelled dead animals you know that smell anywhere mm-hmm. well I guess I gotta follow my nose and I start going in the direction of the smell can I get a let's see it would be a I think it would be just a raw intellect roll at a, right. at a three. So you need an over a nine. Okay. <laughs> 18. You are wandering. You're maybe 50 yards, 100 yards out of, out of the edge of town over to the south. And mm -hmm. there's a big old tree there. And up in it, you see there's some kind of woven thing up, hung up really high. Mm -hmm. And there is something woven into it. And as you're looking up, a drip of blood splashes on your forehead oh. and runs down your nose. Start wiping it off. Yeah, right, they, be uh, right below it, there's a bunch of flowers that are now got a bunch of blood covering those flowers. But this is one of the older trees in town. It's been here for a long time. and But it is climbable. It is a big tree, and it's got branches all over the place. Is it a uh, like a, a hunting sack that people tie um, up in the tree whenever... They want to keep something away from the bears while they sleep. Is, it, is that is that not, what I'm saying? Not the mid, not this close to town. That would be a, yeah a risky plight. Well, whatever it is, I sure as hell hope there ain't no animal in there, and I sure as hell hope there ain't no people in there. Well, you so can I, see I, there is some kind of fur or something attached to that woven thing, whatever it is. Yeah. I, uh, I kind of, I scale the side of the tree, because I do have climbing as a skill, so I climb the side and I cut it down with my hunting knife. If I can do that. All right, so to climb it, I'm going to give you a, it's not hard with, with your skills, I'm going to give you a two, so you need to get over a six to climb it without incident. These are easy things for, for someone like you. I hope so. <laughs> All right. Let's but failure is not a possibility. Well, I got a seven, so. <sighs> <I know. laughs> 
The tree is cold. It's a little bit damp because it's early in the morning. The fog rolled past. And when you get up there, there is a, a diamond shape made of woven kudzu. And wrapped in the middle of all that kudzu is a big boomer the size of a hound. A boomer is a squirrel, by the way, a red squirrel. How are you doing? And it has a bone needle stuck through its neck, and it has been dripping blood down from that. It is dead. It's dead. Yes. Oh. Well, that is something suspicious. <laughs> I better remember that one to tell Jericho. He knows about weird things all right and then i continue to cut down uh the sack and you cut it and it drops it kind of catches the wind because of the kind of kite shape of the of the woven kudzu comes crashing down hmm. one of my dogs decided to add some ambiance yeah. Hey, hound, go away. Get. <laughs> Too many feral dogs in this town, I swear. Oh, all right. And I, I look around me. I, like, look around the woods and see if I can hear or see anyone. You don't see no one here. All right. You know what? I don't even want to know what this thing is. Looks like some kid's been playing around or something, or something else. I might go see if Jericho knows what this is. So I'm gonna go to Jericho's house. Can you make me an intelligence check at a, just a little, at a level two? All right. So I got a six. Okay, that's exactly what you needed. You are headed <laughs> down, and you are walking past some of the storefronts and the hotels and stuff, and you do a double take when you see that both Volney and, and Willie Matheson are sitting there half naked in front of a fireplace trying to keep, you know, with their clothes draped over the stones on the side. An unusual sight at six or seven in the morning. A hey, uh... They're, hey there. Uh, they're inside, what? though. Oh, they're inside. They can't hear me. All right. Wow. I uh, didn't realize people were into swimming in January. But stranger things have happened. I'm going to keep going. All right. Anyway. You get to Jericho's. Lights are out. Oh man, he's probably asleep. All right, I guess I have to go wake him up. And I just knock. Hey, Jer. And you hear the someone knocking on your door already this morning. Uh, though tired, I leap from bed in joy for today is the rock. And uh, <laughs> Jericho's heart just glows with fellowship and community and. They call them holy days for a reason. Um, so he just leaps out of bed and opens up the door without checking to see if all of his lines or wards are in place like he normally does before he gets up. Because he's just so excited. Annie, you couldn't sleep either. The oh, I, was, I slept about a wink, but I was really coming over to kind of get your advice about something I spotted this morning. Who are you going to dance with? Come on in. Yeah, let's talk about it. I'll make no. some tea. <laughs> Jer, I, I ain't thinking about dancing right now. I saw something a bit disturbing, and I, I kind of need your advice. Uh, do you want chamomile or something a little funnier? Oh, uh, you know what? I, I I already had my morning coffee. I, I don't need a drink. But, Jer, I saw, uh, I, I saw a red squirrel stuck into a tree. Them, there's the dondus. They'll get in the funniest places. <laughs> you can't get them down for nothing. But I mean with the pen. Like, it was stabbed. Oh. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Where was it stabbed? Right here. 
Do it, sir. Do his chest. The whole mood drops. Um, Cloud has come out on romp day. Thanks, Annie. Um, I'm I'm sorry, Jer. I just I don't know what that was. I ain't never seen something like that before. Did you bring it with you? Or did you leave it. At, you didn't touch it. No, I didn't touch it. I didn't know that's, if someone was watching me or. That's you know. probably for the best. I'd hate yeah. to encourage you to touch strange things that that might hurt you. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna get dressed real quick, Annie. Uh, if you wanna go check out my boat for decencies sake he's in like long john yeah yeah i'll i'll stand outside and i'll uh i'll have a smoke and i just go and like get a cigarette out i get dressed quickly with now new anxieties uh, <laughs> about what i'm about to go look at <laughs> uh, just for the moment i started raising my own heart it just gets cast back down get all ready for the day and then let Annie lead me to what she has to show me all right I, I flick the cigarette down on the ground and I she put that out Annie it was my god oh uh, <laughs> yeah sorry I forgot and I stamp it oh it's down. fine you know throw it over by the tobacco plants you know the rule oh right 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 and I go. <clears throat> oh man what a night last night that airplane a bunch of weird barefoot people still in a crate. Well, yeah. The contents of a crate. Yeah, I, I'm just a bit concerned about, you know, what's been brought to this town. Mm -hmm. And now we have Squirrel on Squirrel Violence, which is <laughs> nutty. Uh, I'll go out on a limb and say maybe the squirrels are branching out into a new form of hostility. Uh, but once I get a clear picture, I'll understand for sure. Jer, ain't you ever seen a squirrel stab another squirrel through the chest? I no, but I, I don't know that. I don't know that path. I'm, I'm not one to judge a squirrel when I see humans, the intelligent ones, stab each other constant. Uh, who am I to hold it against a squirrel if it just gets a little wild? Could well, have been self-defense. In all my 30 years of life, I ain't never seen no red squirrel stab another red squirrel through the chest. But then again, maybe today's the first. It is a romp day. Let's go see. Let's go see. You head back to town and <clears throat> Volney and Will and William are falling fast asleep in front of the fireplace in the hotel, half naked. A couple people are like staring and as they pass by, they're now starting to wake up. And uh, they are. They look comfy. They're in front of that fire and it's warm. You head over and you pass the hotel and you get to where Annie leads you. And there is for exactly what was described. There is a diamond-shaped woven thing with a boomer right through the center held in place by the the weave and through its neck is poked a bone needle where it has bled out over the plants under the tree and, and uh, is it still up in the branches or has it no been it's been cut, cut down. down all right all right all right uh can I make some sort of roll for how much Jericho would recognize instantly, like, oh, this is what they use, so this is what they're trying to accomplish? Sure, you can make an understand magic roll. I am trained in understanding magic. <laughs> That's why I brought you over, because I ain't. <laughs> I, I also can read pretty good. Uh, so, And I also have an edge of intellect if that changes at all what you're looking for. If you'd like to use it, you may. This is going to be a roll against a four, so that's a twelve. You'll need to roll over. I'll use I'll use it. It's once per turn round, correct? You can yeah. use an edge. Yeah, yeah. I'll use it. So a three down to a nine. Yes. That is a six, which is a nine if you look at it differently. <laughs> 
that it is, although in this instance, it is not that different that we're, that we're looking for. I know exactly what this is, Andy. <laughs> what is it? I'm pretty sure it's a good luck totem for the festival. Uh, oh. It tries to keep uh, rodents away from one's crop, one's larder. It's basically to protect uh, one's resources. Uh, it's a little harsh, a little old fashioned, but I'm pretty sure I've seen this before. Hmm. All right. It's pretty gruesome, though. Yeah. I ain't understand why anybody want to do some sort of sacrifice of a critter. That is a violation. <laughs> it's not even in, it's not even critter sacrifice season right now, if I remember correctly. No, you know, squirrels are always open season, so I can't get them on that. But what I can get them for <clears throat> is mutilation of an animal mm -hmm. corpse in broad daylight. And young kids going to see that they're going to be scarred for life. So that's and what literary. I can do. Yep. Mm hmm. Volney, you I'm wake up. And you see outside Jericho and Annie Lynn talking about something with some with some uh, might to their voices. You can almost hear them through the window. And it looks like they are looking at something on the ground. I'm going to go look. So, I bet you Miss Evangeline would love this for one of those pulp books she's writing. <clears throat> as you walk out, Volney, one thing that strikes you is the freezing cold as it rips over your near-naked body. I'm grabbing the shirt. <laughs> and uh, other people who are also starting to wake up and find the, the festivities uh, welcoming see you and... <gasps> Excuse me, I... I I, I think you should be wearing clothing. We don't we don't want a bunch of nakedness going on around here. There are children gonna be here. Apologies. And I'm going to go grab a shirt. And when you do, you pull the shirt and it goes across the face of William by accident. And mm. William feels it, wakes up right in front of you and mm. and you wake up to a sight that you have not experienced before. A mostly naked Volney standing over you with uh, his shirt in hand and sort of, kind of staring into your eyes, like maybe surprised, maybe not. Good morning. Uh, uh, what time is it? Probably. We felt. Oh, jeez, fell asleep out here. That wasn't what I. Well, okay. <laughs> Uh, are the clothes dry? They're dry. Okay. Um, and they're goes nice ahead and, and starts, warm. Yeah, goes ahead and starts pulling on. Like, looking at the passerby, I'm so sorry. And, like, just starts pulling on his clothes. Yeah, the, and the hotel operator is at the, is at the desk looking at you two. Concerned that you've been out here this long, but yeah. Only here, fell in the crick. Last night, and I, he needs somewhere to dry his clothes and be warm. Otherwise, he would have caught something. Uh, perhaps sorry. a chill. That, that probably would have been what he'd catch. It is cold out there. Exactly. Uh, <coughs> thank you. Uh, and good morning. Good morning. Uh, what? Why are we awake right now? What happened? Jericho, Annie Lynn, uh, they're, they're talking about something. Something pretty loud. Okay. Yeah, should probably check in with everybody. Ooh, is there coffee or something? Uh, Come on now, it's a tea break. It's a bright new day, the day of our Lord. Come on. I thought that was Sunday. That is correct. Today is Saturday. Us the day before. God, God made us the day before he rested. So it's technically both our day and Lord's day. Sure. Okay. Let's go, I guess. Morden, what the hell's happening? Why are y'all yelling in the street? And they found a squirrel. Yeah, squirrel been stabbed through the chip. Well, neck, I guess. Squirrel even have necks? I guess they do. Anyway, 
Uh, and it, I saw it this morning. Some weird thing was attached to it. I cut it down. I mean, you can see it. It's right there if you want to take a look at it. Jared thought it was a good luck charm for the dance tonight. Obviously, uh, granny magic is just a little brutal from, from my tastes. Um, but I will walk up to William and Balmy and pin a corsage on each of them of the eight that I made. There's one for each of them and one for Evangeline. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't need a corsage. <laughs> and no, he has I a gun. don't. And I do. And he does have a gun. And he can go <laughs> get her. <dude. laughs> anyway. So, even if they're in their pajamas, I'm still going to pin the course. Sorry, John. Thank, thank you, Jericho. And for the wrong. Was this okay for the wrong? Back okay. in. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, go for it. Back at Chewie's, Evangeline, you eventually wake up. You, I think you're on mute. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, God, my head. What a night. Oh. Yes. <clears throat> and hanging from the door is your clothes cleaned and dried. Oh, well. Uh, she'll grab them and... Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Chewy. Uh, thank you so much. Chewy and seems to be gone. Shots them anyways. She'll grab them, throw them on. Okay. Clothed again. You warm up. There is always coffee here. And tea. Chewy always has a little bit of that. And he... You suspect that there's somewhere, that there's a nip here in the, somewhere in this house, but you have not been able to discover it yet okay (coughs) she has her own and she's not desperate yep yet (laughs) one can get there and you know unexpectedly Hmm. (coughs) are you doing anything after you get dressed heading Uh, to town or anything yeah, she'll probably review her notes from the prior day. She will look over her books, maybe do a little bit of writing, and then head into town. Well, when you're looking at the books, you do realize, you do remember there is a book there that you are lent called Astronomy, Signs, and Related Sciences. Ah, yes. Ah, uh, I have to look at this. And she will peruse it. She's super excited to look at this new book. And the uh, the book is by an author you have not heard of named Genevieve Grulick. But the book is a pretty long tome on the movements of the moon and the stars and the planets and how alignments of those celestial bodies affect and change people and whom they are. There's a section on diseases related to astronomical um, observations. Uh, There is a section on the science of uh, readings and uh, moon, uh, moon colorations. Interestingly, it says, it, it seems to all be built, be written for recognition of these in the southern Appalachia, southern Appalachia. So perhaps it's a local writer or something that wrote a book about it. Or regional. Uh, who is the author? Genevieve Grulick. Okay, yes, okay. I want to look into her. That's fascinating. Um, given its specificity to the region, when was the book written? It was written nearly 40 years ago. So we're talking 1880 something. Somewhere 1880, we'll say 1886. Okay. Uh, And do I know when the town was founded? Uh, Do you know when the town was founded? I don't think you know that. 
I don't think you would have. Actually, explain your research again, because, I mean, it's uh, interesting. Yes, yes. So, I came down from Boston to study this town and this region because the Cherokee had been moved out. Right. And a bunch of white folks had moved in. And that brought in the Judeo-Christian belief system and a vacuum where a small population isolated from really everybody else uh, with no pre-established religion um, had huh. really brought in new beliefs with no influence around them. Um, and I wanted to see how I... they would bring in new beliefs and when that town was founded would really have mattered to me, I think. Because that really defines the period in which um, their belief systems had been isolated. Right. You. Yeah. So, taking that into consideration, and your, and your immense intellect, you remember that there is a placard on the mayor's office. It says, "Guilty Hole established, 1888." Okay. So this book was written locally just before the town was founded. Fascinating. Correct. Huh. I definitely need to look into Genevieve Grolach. Is there anything in the book contents that stands out to me? In the contents? Um, it does mention the blue moons of August. Okay. And it talks about them being generally a a, a positive thing, a, uh, they bring good omens, and, uh, but it never mentions blue moons of any other months, including January. Hmm. So there's never a prior mention of blue moons in this month. Hmm. Nope. Interesting. Okay. Well, I'll knock these down and then I'll take my findings to, I guess, my new friends in town. All right. And you head to town. Indeed. <clears throat> While you all are gathering around looking at, at dead squirrels and whatnot, you can see that there are people are starting to... Um, meander around the town center here and going to the businesses and starting to you can feel the energy starting to rise for the romp there are even unusually a couple of automobiles heading into town that you see coming down the road <clears throat> and they're coming in quiet and, and slow nothing like the speedster that core was the day before and as they go past, one of them is a little bit finer than the others in that it has an open air driver area. So the front area where there's a driver has an open top. The back area is enclosed and you see a woman in there. And as it, the car's going by, you can see that that is a car of finery. Evangeline, you are a little bit at a distance, but you do see that car coming in at, from from your vantage as you're heading in. And the car slowly goes past and it pulls up to the mayor's office. The other car that was near it, it went and parked somewhere else. Hmm. And the woman gets out as the as the driver opens the door for her. And she takes her bag 
She is dressed well above the standards of this town. Evangeline recognizes that kind of uh, dress and apparel and even makeup. She turns around the back of the car. She looks at you for a moment, Evangeline, as she's walking, not stopping. And she smiles for a moment and then heads into the mayor's office. Am I to presume that this is Selekaziah? It's a presumption. Definitely has enough money for a, for a fine car and a driver. And some of the kids are starting to come around. They are looking at this car in ways that only children can look at at the make of a car and you see them part starting to stuff things like a potato into the back of the uh, muffler and the other one's trying to keep it from being too obvious while the driver sits in the seat I'd like to pin my third corsage on uh, Miss uh, Evangeline and then give out the other five to the five newest children to move to the area. Okay. Uh, who, who might be a little shy, scared still. Sure. Uh, but that'll, all, all of Bernard's lakes have been accounted for now. And oh. <laughs> it, it's, uh, for, it's for the romp. <laughs> Morning, Miss Evangeline. Uh -huh. Oh, well, hello, Billy. Uh, hmm. Well, if you don't mind, Billy was, you know, when I was a child. Kind of, uh... Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, William. Yes. That works, too. Thank you. Uh, just, you know, bring back memories. Being called that, just not my favorite. No problem. Come uh, on. <clears throat> so why were you all sleeping in front of the fireplace and you naked? And uh, Miss Evangeline, there was also a squirrel stabbed through the hot um, in a crime of passion uh, that we cracked this morning already. Jericho, can you make me an, an, an intellect roll at a, at a four? So that would be a 12. Yes. Uh, that would be a three, which is less than what you would like. It is. Take an XP. Reroll that. That's that's all. Oh. <laughs> sure. We've only we've only got one. We got two. You got two from last week. Do we have two? And that Wait is I'm gonna, gonna, I'm gonna save that one up there. Okay. There's Wait a, a minute. Coming. Someone explain. Where's the speakeasy and why did no one invite me? Well, sorry. Uh. Well, we should talk about that somewhere else, Miss Evangel. That just sounds like a whole bunch of fun. The bee's <laughs> knees. <laughs> oh. Um. Well, the... Our good old friend, Rolny, decided to take a dip in the creek, I guess? I did and... not try to go in the water. I ended up there. I don't know what happened. You had too much to drink. Can you please pause? Is this some sort of euphemism? No. No. Yeah, like for uh, baptism or something. Uh. Mm, I wish. We we got wet in the creek because mm -hmm. I had to fish Volney out. And so. <clears throat> we had to dry our clothes. None of this <laughs> clarifies my question. Is this literal or a euphemism? No, <laughs> quite literally, we okay. were soaked to the bone. And I had to fish him out. William is a fisher of men, just like our good Lord Jesus uh, <laughs> called his disciples. <laughs> I am deeply confused, and it is too early. I have not had any liquor. I am exhausted. Um. Uh, so why were you in the water, Hulk? <laughs> yeah. What? What happened? What? Oh dear. Oh dear Lord. Was there a stream? A real stream? Please. 
Yeah, yes. let's start there. Yeah. There's, okay. there's the critic. Okay, uh, th- okay, that's that's re- okay. Twelve Pole Creek runs right through the town. Understood. Yeah. Yes, wonderful. So you went into you got you, just, you uh, went for a swim. Fell off the bridge. Help I, me. In. I apparently either fell off the bridge or walked off the side of the road into the water without knowing it. Did you sleepwalk? No, I was mm-hmm. wide awake, and then I felt something take my hand, and then all of a sudden I was in the water. And there were crows all around me in the trees, just following me. Were you walking back into town? I thought the church was the other way. I was trying to walk to the church, but they, they were following me, and I don't know what's wrong. Uh, they who? The crows. You dropping breadcrumbs or something from your pants and you don't realize it? No. All right. All I know is that the postman passed by, I heard a honk, and then a splash. I go investigate, see Volney struggling in the water. I run down the river, grab a branch, and fish him out. And, uh... Getting Vol- soaked myself. Uh, Volney, darling, you, d- you didn't have any sort of tipple last night? So... Yeah, something to drink. I, you keep saying something to drink like I know what that means. Harder than a tea. You know you what know? I mean. The <laughs> liquor, Volney, you know, the booze. All right. I, I ain't that kind of police. I ain't gonna report you to anybody. You can tell I us literally do not know what you are talking about. A little sip from the devil's teeth. Moonshine. You. Maybe Volney just breathed in too much smoke last night. Oh, those plastic oh, wait, 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 wait. Are you talking about why that lemonade or that tea tasted terrible? <laughs> yeah. I'm I, sure that's probably why. <laughs> possibly. I don't you know. You mean heavenly? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about. What? Uh, I mean, if you drank some... If you had some of the tea, right? It was lemonade or tea or something at well, the... It, it's what was in the, the... Granny's house? Lemonade, at least. I can tell you that much. Hmm. And, well, never mind. Anyways. <clears throat> what were you drunk, Volney? Were you drunk? No. Okay. Then, uh... Are you mad? Some people say that. Like... Like doctors? Thank you. I haven't been able to see a doctor in a while. Hmm. Well... That's what happened. That's my morning. Huh? And you all hear a bell, and you see that the, the postal office Every time the the mail is ready, rings the bell so people in town know that they can come check if mail is there. And you see some people start to line up to go in and check for mail. The the mail truck comes once a week, so. GM, this might be a stretch of a skill, but I am trained in sensing danger. When Volney mentions the crows, do I just get like a goosebump type response uh, without maybe understanding the situation? Um, if that's too much, that's that's fine. Yeah, that that's a little too much. I mean, you have heard of crows doing the bidding of of all sorts. People using right, all kinds of things. So a crow as an emissary or an eyepiece for uh, someone of the woods is not an unusual thing to have heard of heard of. Volney, have you had a history with crows, or is this your first murder? No, no, I felt a hand take my hand, like... A crow hand? No, no. Oh. I, I shouldn't mention this here. That's fair. We are in the middle of the street with a bunch of children uh, trying to shove a potato in my car right there. <laughs> I mean... I have my room, not, like, we can just, we can go to my room, it's... Not big, but there's space at least, and it's private. 
All right. And also, uh, Volney's going to like, look at the kids trying to show a potato to the pipe. They have succeeded. They have, they're no longer trying. There is a potato jammed hard up into there. I'm going Good to kid. tell the kids, you better Good get kid. that out before I have to teach you math again. And one of them throws some mud at you and runs. The other one starts trying to pull the potato out. But it's stuffed in so far, they have no way of getting it out. So he instead then pulls out his little pocket knife, because most, most kids that, in that time and place carry a little pocket knife. Starts kind of jamming in there, trying to cut it out, and then the driver comes around. What's going on here? Kids, uh, it is too early in the morning. I have been up. Kid got a potato stuck. They're getting it out. Three it's fine. Hours. And he grabs <sighs> the kid by the back shirt, lifts him up. Are you trying to start trouble with my car? I'd be very careful what you do next, sir. I would be. Uh, he don't know no better. And he puts the kid out. Is it, I'm sorry, I apologize. Is this your child? I was just trying to find out if there was somebody who is accountable for this child's actions if they cause damage to, to uh, this vehicle. Uh, that's a great story. Uh, you almost got your potato out of that kid? He's like cutting it out and cutting it out and it finally comes out. And then as it's coming out, you see that woman leaving the mayor's office and the mayor is standing at the door as she comes out and, and waving and saying, bye, I'll see, see you again later. I hope that you uh, get your business done while you're here. And she turns and kind of runs into the crowd of you. And when she does, she looks all, at all of you and the kids I see the romp is nearly started, is it not? She looks at the driver and the driver's eyes just kind of turn back to the car and he goes back to the car and leaves the, you know, leaves all of you. And she leans down, you okay, kid? And he goes, yeah, your driver's mean. Oh, he can be mean sometimes. Here, here you go. And she reaches into her little purse and she takes out a, a penny you can get yourself some candy, I think, with that, can you not? And his eyes just widen. Oh my gosh, I can, I can. And him and the other kids run off to the general store. They should I really invest that. I hope uh, everything's okay. Um, no harm, no foul, I suppose, right? Mm. May yeah. I ask your name? Ma'am? And she looks at your badge. <laughs> My name is uh, Sela Kaza. Kaz I'm sorry, mm -hmm. Sela Kazaya. Ah, Miss Kazaya. You, you, you've heard my name, it sounds like, from that response. Ah, uh, yes, your reputation does precede you. Uh, I I am Evangeline, Evangeline Blank. Of Boston? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact. Well, Albie, what are you doing in this part of the woods? Oh, I am uh, researching the culture. What culture? Is this culture? It just looks like a town to me. It's people, and where there's people, there's culture. I suppose that there's some to that. Indeed. You're, Tell me, what brings you to town? And she leans in towards you. Your your clothes still have a... Not still. Your clothes have a scent of... A fire or something. Is everything okay here? Oh, I thought. smell on the mayor, too. Oh, indeed. How many uh, hands does she have? How many what? <laughs> hands. Two. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Uh, how many hands did the driver have? Two. <laughs> but they're in I gloves, guess. so who knows? Maybe one is not a real hand. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, it is unfortunate. You see, there was an uh, accident last night. Uh, an aeroplane happened to fall from the sky. I heard. Isn't that terrible? It is. My, my 
gift for my brother was on that, and it seems like it has gone missing. There was a... Oh, what sort of gift? A gift from my brother. Oh, how vague. And yet sweet. <laughs> well, we do have to give gifts to our family that, that do us right and we care for, do we not? Ah, uh, yes, of course, family is most important. Miss Silla, uh, sorry to interrupt your conversation, but I am the local gang warden. I was on scene last night at the crash. Very sorry to hear about uh, the loss of your property. However, I must say that this crate that we found had scratch marks on the inside of it. Now, I must uh, ask you, since this is my jurisdiction, you weren't transporting any exotic animals, for chance, were you? E exotic? No. I would say a prized family pig would not be considered exotic, even in these parts of the woods, would they not? No. Were you uh, transporting a pig then? I was not transporting it. The Pearl, Pearl Company, Pearl Industries, I believe, they were transporting it to me. All right. Uh, Obviously, well, uh, these aeroplane things were not built for safety, not like a locomotive. I would prefer never to fly now that I've... Uh, heard about them just falling out of the sky like that. Give me a train any day. Like the, what we assume is the four people? Uh, the mayor was telling me that there was some, um, some individuals that, uh, that are deceased from, from the crash. And yes. Do you know who they are? I do not know who they are. I only know of my crate and the story that that your good mayor gave to me is she uh, is she telling the truth because I can I can detect a lie. She's, mm -hmm. just hyping up our warden from behind like yeah I'm gonna give you a roll okay at a four so you would need to get a 12 or higher all right I also would like to do something too after this I got a natural 20 Yay! Okay. Yeah. All right. So suddenly her hand falls off. <laughs> <laughs> this is a well-mannered lady who is pretty good at the vagaries of society and conversation. And you are pretty good at ignoring the the stuff around it and getting to what is what you would consider be more like the feelings behind the words. And there is a feeling behind those words, especially in the pauses and the moments between them, that make you think there is something amiss in what is being stated. Not sure what, but something feels off. <clears throat> and she looks away for a moment and she says, I am most apologetic, but I cannot spend all, wagon, all time wagging here. I have a meeting with... I have a meeting to, to get to, if you don't mind. Of course, I understand. But I know where to find you if I find this pig of yours, right? Oh, I will be back here this evening for the end of the romp. At least I would I would love to find out if, that, if my pig is, is found. It is yeah, a prize we'll, pig after all. <clears throat> we'll, uh, we'll keep an eye out for it. I'm and, good at tracking. And she... She takes her eyes off of you, almost like it's uncomfortable to stare at your eyes for very long. Mm -hmm. And she looks at Evangeline and goes, I am most intrigued by someone with taste and style, though, like this. Ironed apparel and makeup to boot. Are you a bit of what they would call an East Coast flapper? Ah, as a matter of fact, I am a girl of distinction from Boston. Uh, yes, I'm here to study these fine people, but... I do come from the Northeast. Perhaps then you participate in vices of all kinds. It does depend on the vice, but uh, some. Well, perhaps a little Husha John will be in order for later tonight after I have completed my business, if you would oh, mind. Heavens. That would be the bee's knees. <laughs> 
Well, have a good romp. I hope to catch some of it before the evening goes away. And she heads over. The driver gets up, opens the door for her, and she climbs in, and her bag slides in. And Could I shout out before she gets... What, what name does your pig answer to? <laughs> And, and wait she, to see how long it takes her to think of a name. It takes <laughs> longer than it should have. Mm. Daisy, like any good pig. Like any randomly made up generated pig name. I get you. Thank you. <laughs> Daisy. Well, at least now we can know what we find the right pig. Yeah. That's if this pig's name is actually Daisy. Well... <laughs> I am uh, sorry. I do have to get get on my way. And she gets in, and the door closes. The driver turns, looks back at you for a moment, and then gets in the car. And then they they drive off very slowly. No, not like the fast, risky people who were here before. <clears throat> and you hear the hooting and hollering of some kids coming out of the general store with a bag of of candy that they're splitting among themselves. And they are so happy. 